For serious YouTubers, save time and money with TubeBuddy, the premier tool used at geekoutdoors.com. Get more done today by checking out the affiliate link in the description area below. Hey, welcome to another episode of geekoutdoors.com. On my continuing episode of making the move from Windows or Mac over to Linux, today I'm going to be talking about how Linux is easier to use than Windows, specifically Windows 10. Now, if you have not seen my original episode where I show you how to install VirtualBox and then install Linux Mint within VirtualBox, be sure to check that out. I will leave it in the description area below. Now, one of the big things that a lot of people argue about, in my opinion, is the fact that Linux is for geeks. Linux is harder to use than Windows. Now, I am not going to disagree with that in terms of back in the day when Linux first came out in 1991 for years. It's definitely not easy to use, you know, and if anything, you had to have a lot of technical knowledge because it's primarily made for very technical people because the GUI interfaces were not there at the time. You still had to do a lot of command line. Uh, things were just not consistent and, you know, not stable. Um, that's just the reality. But now in our modern age, Linux, specifically distros like Linux Mint, are a lot easier to use. And I'm going to show you that by covering three main areas where I feel that Linux is easier to use. And it's really meant for the everyday user, I think, more than Windows. And if anything, I really feel like Windows or Windows 10 is really meant for geeks. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to show that to you right now. So in my virtual machine, I actually have Windows 10. And I also did a video on this earlier. You can check that out in the description area below. And I also have Linux Mint 18.1. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show three main areas and the first one I'm going to show you is in Windows and then what I'll do is I'll show that same function in Linux. Now there are many different things in the operating systems and there you could probably go into hundreds or maybe thousands of different areas if you really went detailed but I really just want to talk about very general areas that a lot of people can understand okay so the first area is the menus and also how many different types of settings items that you have to go through and in Windows 10 I think it is more I could say more difficult more in-depth in a lot of ways and it could be more confusing okay so this is what I mean so let's first start with something real simple the start menu right so if you look at the Windows 10 start menu hey it looks fine you know it doesn't look like it's anything crazy but just just look at this okay so I do want to make a note okay after I installed Windows 10 I did install additional software, okay? So the software that I installed is first AVG Antivirus. I also installed Firefox, Chrome, and a Google AdWords Editor. That's it. I haven't made any other setting changes above and beyond whatever I did at the beginning. So I just want to put that out there. So whatever you're seeing here in the menu, besides those programs that I just mentioned, this comes default when I installed Windows 10, okay? So if you could see here, you know, if you are a regular Windows user, this looks fine. It doesn't look complex, you know. But then there's all these other things here as well, you know, primarily advertising. Uh, there are other services or programs, okay. But let's go ahead and move to Linux Mint. If you go down here to the menu, I think this is a lot cleaner and easier, okay. And things are organized real well, and I don't have any other distractions, okay. It's very, very simple to see. Just from the menu alone, I think that in Linux Mint, it's a lot easier and more organized in my opinion. And also, as I just mentioned, there are no any types of advertising showing other services that you, you know, that they might want you to download or purchase, okay? So that's first in terms of the menus. And then second to that, Let's go into the actual settings itself, okay? Now, you can get into settings in two main ways. You could go down here to go into settings, okay? Or you could go here under your action center and go into all settings right here. So let's go ahead and go into all settings, okay? Now, if you look here, this looks fairly organized. And once again, if you use Windows regularly, it is organized, okay? But 
when you actually dig deep into things, like for example, if I went into system, okay, there's all these options, but then if you look under each one, look how many options that there are here, okay? There are more and more options available. And so as you're looking through this, there's like menus within menus. So there's a lot of sub menus. Like for example, if I wanted to adjust my privacy, right? I would go here to privacy. That's great. But then underneath that, look at all these options. Okay, so that one looks okay. There's location. There's camera. And so this is already on by default, which makes sense. Uh, but then here are all the apps that use your camera. Then there's microphone, which is on by default. All the programs that have this on. Notifications, speech and ink, typing, okay? And then there's also things like update and security, uh, which I think is important to a lot of people. So here's Windows updates, there's Windows Defender, recovery, activation. But you get my point here. In Windows 10, even though the high level menus, they, they make a lot of sense, but as you're digging through, there's a lot more sub menus, okay? There is a lot more digging that you have to do, okay? And, and once again, if you are used to Windows, which most people are, this doesn't seem like it's anything complex. And uh, my Windows 10 install just crashed. And so um, if here in Linux, if you go here and then Here's settings right here. And as you can see here, I think everything is organized a lot easier. Here's appearance, you know, things like background, themes, okay. And then privacy, if you go here to privacy, that's it. I just turn it on and off for, there is no other options. Um, you go down further, you see, I mean, if you look here, I think things are more organized and it's a lot easier to get around without going through a whole bunch of sub menus. Okay. Now there are other menu options available on some of these. Like if you were to click on, uh, well, let me get to example where there's more tabs. Well, but you kind of get the idea. See, like this one has two different tabs, but I still feel that that is a lot easier of a user experience than it is on Windows 10 and I think it's less complex okay you don't have to dig through so many different menus and this is the entire system settings all your options are available here under really easy to understand headings okay right there so menus and settings uh, I think that is a lot easier to use here in Linux than it is in Windows 10. Although if you've never used Linux, you would think that it's much easier in Windows 10. Okay, so the second area where I feel that Linux has an advantage whenever it comes to ease of use is installing programs. So typically in the Windows world, if you wanna install a program, you would have to go to the website to download the programs. Let's say for example, I wanted to install FileZilla, okay? So how I would do that is I would first open up my browser, okay? And then I would type in FileZilla. So I go to the website. Uh, no, I don't want, okay. And then once the website loads, you could download FileZilla. Uh, yes. This is the one I want to download. Okay. So let's go ahead and download that. Okay. Is it downloading? Okay, there's, okay, it's downloading. All right, so now that it's downloading, I could go ahead and save it or run it. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it and then I'll run it once it downloads. So. Here's the antivirus program. Making sure there's no viruses, okay. So it's finished downloading. So let's go ahead and go to the downloads folder. So now we'll go ahead and install it, okay. So I'm gonna double click on it. 
and obviously Windows is going to ask if this is okay to install. Uh, read through the agreement. Yes, I agree. Okay, who can be able to use this? All users? Yes. Okay. It's going to put it in my okay menu. Okay. Different components you can install. Okay. It's going to install it in your program folders. Got gotcha. you. And it'll also put in your start menu. Okay, now it's installing. Finish. Okay. Okay, so great. The program open. So let's make sure. So if you go down here, there there is FileZilla and it's put here alphabetically. So FileZilla. And then cool. FileZilla is installed. Great. So that's how we install programs in Windows. And that's what most people are accustomed to. Okay. And once again, it's fairly simple if you are in the Windows world. But if you go to Linux, let's say I do want to install FileZilla as well. So here in Linux, you do have the option to go to the website and download it if it's available for Linux. Okay. So I could do the same thing here. I could go here to a website. I could type in FileZilla, okay, and I could also go through the same thing if I wanted to do it the Windows way, okay. See, you could come download and so forth, but that's not really how it works typically in the Linux world. In the Linux world, you would go to your software manager, okay. So you go here to your menu, administration, software manager. And these are the repositories. And so um, the whole idea of an app store, this is really where it came from. You know, in the whole Linux world, it's been this way for a very long time. So here you could either type it or you could look under different categories. Okay, so here I want to download FileZilla. Okay. And there is FileZilla. I install it. And then it's downloading it. And once it's done, it is say it's complete. And that's it. It's installed. So if you come down here to your menu, let's see where it would be. Okay. Internet. There's FileZilla. Boom. FileZilla. And, you know, as you can see here, I think uh, this was same program. There's FileZilla. But as you just saw there, I think the whole process of downloading and installing software is much easier in Linux. You know, and now that people are used to doing the whole App Store thing, it's even more familiar and easier. Whereas here in the Windows world, they still use the old model of opening up the browser, going to the website, and then uh, downloading the software okay and you could also do that in Linux as well however the way that they do it here primarily is just to do everything from your software manager where it has all this software in a quote-unquote app store like you know user interface and so that is the second main thing that Linux does that is easier to do that in Windows is downloading and installing programs okay so here's another aspect that annoys me and I'm pretty sure everybody can agree with this is the Windows updates okay so I didn't see any update messages here but here's the thing when I try to shut down my Windows system right here it's asking me if I want to update and shut down or update and restart so you know even if you did not want to do the updates right now it's still gonna force you to update before you could actually shut down the machine and uh, that's absolutely annoying and you know as anybody knows you don't know how long it's going to take and you can't shut down your machine while it's updating you could but you know there could be uh, bad consequences so that's another thing that just I don't like about Windows okay so uh, as you can see here this is probably something that all of you are familiar with is the dreaded uh, Windows updates uh, the updates downloaded in the background and now uh, I have to whenever I started up my Windows machine in VirtualBox I have to wait until this is done so obviously you could uh, 
turn it off while it's updating, but that's probably not a good idea. And so within the Linux world, I don't have to uh, worry about that because I get to choose when the updates go in and when the downloads also are downloaded as well. I mean, actual updates are downloaded. That's what I meant to say. So as you can see, um, yeah, this is, if you think about complexity, once again, this is another thing that you actually have to think about, you know? And, you know, luckily that wasn't a long update, but obviously if you're Windows users, the number of updates vary. And once again, you know, this is something that interrupts your process, uh, your workflow, and it's unavoidable. You know, you can try to hold off on updates as long as you can, but at some point you won't be able to avoid it. You know, just like in that case, you know, I restarted my computer and the update started updating, okay? So that's another case where, you know, simplicity is simply not the same uh, with the different operating systems between Linux and Windows 10. Okay, so in the Linux world, if you did want to update your system, you know, with whether there's new updates or there's driver updates or whatever, it's much easier and more seamless in Linux. Like, I don't have that whole thing in, like in Windows where it would update things in the background, okay? It would download updates without you knowing, okay? Here, I just go down here to system updates, which is basically the update manager, which is what that's called. And there's all the updates that I can install, okay? And so far, none of it has been downloaded until I tell it to. So if I tell it to install updates, it'll download all these updates and then install it, okay? And on top of it, like majority of times, I do not have to restart my machine whereas in the windows world you have to okay so let's go ahead and ins let me just install the critical updates or actually i'll just say install updates why not it's about 173 and then you put your password in and this is a small update and so while it's doing all this you know i just wait until it's done well, it's, it's going to take a few seconds and in the meantime, I can still do everything that I was just doing, okay? And a lot of what happens underneath Linux, it's very seamless in my opinion, okay? The whole point of all the updates and everything, it's not meant to actually interfere with your user experience, okay? And so it, all this stuff that's happened, it kind of just gets out of the way. Whereas in the whole Microsoft Windows world, it's like when things happen, it actually gets in the way of your uh, computing experience. Okay, so let's go back here. And it's almost done here. So once this is done, the updates are done. And as you see, I won't have to restart my computer unless it was something like kernel updates, which doesn't happen very often. Okay, so it's installing everything. And this is in real time, so I haven't sped any of this up. Okay, so just to show you that um, it really doesn't affect your computer experience. So like I said, I could just minimize this and still do what I was doing uh, previously. So once this is done, great. So when you refresh, um, it everything should already be updated. And so, yeah. And that's it, you know, I mean, everything's up to date. and. I didn't update any of these because these are not like critical updates. And see, all my updates are done and I didn't have to do anything else. And I didn't have to restart my machine. You know, so if I wanted to shut down, it's not going to try to do updates because it already did the updates. And so, as you can see there, those are the three main categories, in my opinion, on why Linux is easier to use than Windows. And there's probably many other areas, but those are the three main areas that I think everybody can understand and see and for people who've never used Linux uh, I really hope that this can help you understand that it's not as hard uh, it's not extremely difficult to use and I hope that these examples show you that if anything once you start using Linux and specifically Linux Mint you'll find your experience a lot easier in the long run in so many different areas you know and you know, once you start using Windows less and less and start using Linux more and more, and then when you have to go back, it's like all those things 
um, and they might seem little, but they are extremely annoying and they are complex. And so now, you know, when I go back to Windows 10 music and I'm like, man, this is really made for more geeks than Linux Mint. Linux Mint is way easier uh, to use. And it's just overall, in my opinion, it's a much simpler, just straight to the point user experience. Whereas here, there's just a lot of stuff. Okay, a lot of stuff. And a lot of it, I feel it is uh, unnecessary. It's, it's designed in a way that it's just made to, I guess, be complex, you know, and I think that's by design. Um, I, I can't remember there's different design principles on there. But anyways, not to get into all that. So those are my thoughts on why Linux is easier to use uh, than Windows. If you had any thoughts of your own, whether you think Linux is easier or Windows is easier, be sure to leave it in the comments area below. And if you did get value out of these videos, leave a like and subscribe. And if you wanted to support my channel further, you can do that at patreon.com forward slash geek outdoors. Thanks for checking out this episode. And as always, if you like these videos, be sure to click on the subscribe button. And for full written content, audio content, and additional geek stuff, head over to geekoutdoors.com. And I'll see you outdoors on the very next episode.